If you've ever tried to animate your nav mesh agents with root motion, you've probably run into a lot of problems. In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at how you can animate your nav mesh agents using root motion to get that perfect looking animation with no foot sliding. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by tackling complicated animator problems with nav mesh agents. Using root motion animations has a lot of cool benefits like you never have that annoying foot sliding because your nav mesh agent or your character controller speed doesn't exactly match the animation speed. But combining this with a nav mesh agent is pretty tricky because how do you use the animator movement when the nav mesh agent is the one that should be driving where you're going because it knows the path that you need to take. That's the problem that we're going to solve in this video. Listen to me very closely. This is the most important piece of this entire video. The animator setup that you use is going to be a little bit different from what we're going to do today, and you're going to need to play with it to make it work entirely correctly. I'm going to give you some tips on how you can play with your animator setup to get a good result, but you're going to have to spend a little bit of time trying to get it to work correctly. Let's talk about the three things that you need to make this work. Number one is your animator setup. You're going to need some parameters on your animator to have velocity X, velocity Y, or even a 1D blend tree is okay with just like a locomotion value. That blend tree needs different states for the run forward, run backwards. If you have run left, run right, run 90 degrees, all of those ones, those are also great to put into this blend tree. What I found is also when you're not moving whatsoever, you need to have an animation that is still moving for that state of the blend tree. So for example, if I have a 1D locomotion, blend tree, walk backwards, walk forwards, and what you would think you'd put idle for. I found if you put a walking animation, it works better. We'll talk about exactly how I set this up in the next section. Number two, we need a script that will catch the on animator move callback, which is called anytime that we have root motion animation on an animator and we've attached a script to it and we've implemented it. Here we're going to synchronize the root motion position and then nav mesh agents next position. And again, when we talk about the scripting, we're going to talk about why we need to do that exactly. And the third step is we need to set the animator parameters based on what's going on. So we're going to do when we left click, we're going to set a destination. And then in the update loop, we're going to set the animator parameters based on where the agent has been moving and where the root motion position is going. Remember that this project is available on GitHub for free. You can download it, play with it. In this repository, you're gonna be able to get the dude model. I'm also going to show you the gargoyle model from Infinity PBR. This is a really awesome 3D model that comes with sounds, animations, and you can customize how he looks with blend shapes. So all of that's really awesome. It's going to be an affiliate link in the description if you want to check out that gargoyle as well. I wanted to use two different models because the dude is already configured with a very nice animator controller and the gargoyle has a 1D blend tree on the animation and that actually led to a lot of discovery in this video when I was going through how do we have the 2D and the 1D and make them both work the same code. The gargoyle will not be in the repository because it's a paid asset, but if you do have that asset, you can download it, import it into the project, and then you'll get all of it working together. We'll first take a look at the animator setup if we're going to use a 2D blend tree for the movement. If we select the dude, the locomotion controller here has two key states, idle and move. Idle will transition to move when the move parameter is turned to true. Importantly as well, we have an interruption source as current state with an ordered interruption and we have a relatively short transition duration. You have to play with the transition duration to get a value that works well based on your animations. The move state is a blend tree and you'll see as I move around these velocity x, velocity y, the dude moves basically in a circle where they can run in any direction. I found it's important that the zero zero velocity should still be moving. At first I didn't think this was important and thought it was kind of weird. It didn't work very well when the gargoyle had an idle state as part of their movement blend tree. You'll also notice on the parameters here, we have velocity X and velocity Y as two input parameters. This model, the animator controller, and all of these animations came from Unity. And this model is included in the repository if you get it on GitHub 
we move over to our gargoyle. This is not included in the repository, but if you import the gargoyle asset from Infinity PBR, it'll hook itself up automatically for you. This animator setup you'll notice is very similar to the dude. We have a ground locomotion in an idle state, the idle will transition to the ground locomotion when the move condition is true. I again have an interruption source of current state, order interruption, and I have a short transition duration. The ground locomotion is a one-dimensional blend tree this time, and we have three states. We have walk backwards, walk, and walk. You'll notice that the zero threshold walk is at a half speed and the full speed is at one. So if we play this with a value of zero, you'll see that the gargoyle is walking kind of slowly and he goes faster as we go to one and walks backwards at negative 0.5. This is what I found works very nicely for this particular model. Based on your models, you may need something different. I have found that whatever you put at that zero threshold needs to be a moving animation, otherwise it just doesn't look right. If we select the gargoyle again, we'll see that it has a nav mesh agent. Some key configurations here are, I found that setting the stopping distance to be a non-zero value was extremely helpful for this animation quality. Setting the angular speed relatively high just gives the ability for the gargoyle to turn around since this one does not have turning animations. It looks a little bit better when he can turn more quickly. And setting a speed to be something that is relatively close to the speed that the gargoyle will actually move at top speed is also important for the avoidance quality. If we set a value that's ridiculously high here, it will still work. Just the avoidance of other nav mesh agents will consider other nav mesh agents that are much farther away that won't actually impact the pathing of this agent. So choosing a value that's still close to the movement speed is important to give you the best quality agent avoidance. You'll see that the dude is very similar. They just have an enemy movement and a nav mesh agent. These guys move a little bit faster, so they have a higher speed. They still have a non-zero stopping distance and a lower angular speed because they have the forward 45 animations as well. So they can take a little bit longer to turn and still look natural. If we go ahead and click play, where our player movement is working exactly as it did in AI series part three, where the animator is driven by the nav mesh agent, we'll see with a velocity of five, there is a lot of foot sliding on this gargoyle. This is showing that problem that root motion will solve for us by having the velocity of the model synchronized with the actual animation speed. If I change the nav mesh agent speed to something like two, we'll see that it looks a lot better, but there's still some foot sliding and still not really great. If I further move it down, we can see the inverse problem where it looks like the model's moving too slow for how fast he's walking. Let's take a look at how this code works and how we can refactor it to work with root motion so we get rid of this problem. If we open up the player movement script, we'll see that this is working almost exactly the same as what we did in AI series part three. We can left click to move and we'll synchronize the animator state based on the agent's velocity. That's the very simple animation that we did over there. So let's refactor this to start being able to support root motion animation. We're gonna add two more class member variables, a vector to velocity and a vector to smooth delta position. And I'm gonna get into what those mean in just a second. Before we use those, let's go ahead and set up our animator to use root motion because we need it to do that and also configure our agent. We're going to set the animator to apply root motion to be true because this is going to only work with root motion animated models now. We're going to set the nav mesh agent to update position to be false because we want the animator to drive the movement, not the nav mesh agent. We're going to keep the agent.update rotation to be true to make sure that our model is always aligned to where they're going. If your animations support rotating, you can also update the rotation without updating the nav mesh agent rotation, and you can set this to be false. I'll talk about where you would do that and how you do that in just a second. Next, we're going to implement the on animator move callback, which is how we override the default root motion behavior. This is called every frame before inverse kinematics is applied. We're going to get the root position from the animator with vector three root position equals animator dot root position. We're going to set that root position Y value to be the agent's next position Y. This way we're going to keep our model aligned to the height that the nav mesh agent is traversing. If we don't set this when we're going up a slope, our model will stay at the same level and not come up the slope with the agent. If we're going down a slope, then our model will be floating. We'll then set the transform position to be the root position and the agent's next position to also be the root position. This way our nav mesh agent will start moving based on the position of our model. If your root motion animations also include the rotations, this is where you would set the transform.rotation based on the animator.root rotation. 
Now let's go to that synchronize animator and agent function that's called on update. What we're first going to do is calculate the delta position from the agent's next position in our current transform position. We're going to set the y value delta to be zero because we're always going to synchronize the y value between the agent and the root motion position. If you're going to have something like jumping and traversing off mesh links, you may need to do a little bit more work here to make sure that they're synchronized properly. We're going to then calculate the local space delta position with float dx equals vector3 dot transform right to world delta position and float dy to be vector3 dot transform forward to the world delta position. And we'll make a vector2 delta position based on those two values. That's going to tell us relative to the right and forward where this world delta position is. This is where our smooth delta position is going to come into play. We're going to do a low pass filter on the delta time and smooth our delta position we just calculated to that smooth delta position. This will help us keep everything smooth with a variable frame rate. Now we'll set the velocity based on the smooth delta position divided by the time dot delta time. So that'll tell us based on how far we moved in this frame, what is our current velocity? This is our current velocity. But if we're coming close to the agent's stopping distance, what we can do is slow down that velocity down to zero. So that way we appropriately come to a stop as we're coming to the end of our nav mesh agent path. So we're going to check if the agent's remaining distance is less than or equal to the stopping distance. We're going to set the velocity to be alert value between vector 2, 0 and the velocity based on that stopping distance. Now we'll check if we should be moving. So I'm going to define a bool should move equals velocity dot magnitude is greater than 0.5 f. And this value is kind of arbitrary. You could move this up to a serialized property so you can play with it. The idea here is, again, just smoothing out when we transition from idle to moving. We're also going to check that the remaining distance is greater than the agent stopping distance. You might think that's kind of weird based on what we just checked, but I found that this helps when we have a one dimensional blend tree to prevent the agent from getting close to the stopping point and then circling around it because they're still moving too fast. We'll then update the animator.set pool to set move based on whether we should move or not. And we're going to update the locomotion value based on the velocity magnitude. This is based on a one dimensional blend tree. Remember that if you're using velocity X and velocity Y for a 2D blend tree like the dude, then you'll set the velocity X velocity Y based on the velocity X and velocity Y properties. That'll look something like this. The last thing we're going to do in this function is correct if our model and our nav mesh agent are too far away from each other. We'll calculate the delta magnitude of world delta position dot magnitude and check if that's greater than the agent radius. And I'm dividing by 2f here. Again, this is based on your model, your animation, and how much of a tolerance between these two deltas you're willing to accept. Inside of this, we're going to do transform.position equals vector3.lert from the animator root position to the agent's next position. And I'm going to use the same smoothing value as we used before. So we're moving the position somewhere between where the root motion animation is and where the agent can go. And we're smoothing that because sometimes the model will try to like walk through something that's not on the nav mesh and we want to kind of pull it in closer to where the actual nav mesh is. I'm saying half the radius is as far as I'm willing to accept, but you could maybe say the full radius or even a larger number than the radius. Let's take a look at how does this look now that we have root motion based animation for our nav mesh agents. I I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to show your support, you can go to patreon.com slash Wom Academy, get your name up here on the screen and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. At the phenomenal tier level, there's Andrew Bowen. And at the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Paul Berry, and Rulin. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. If we open up the Unity editor again, there's nothing to hook up on a player movement that hasn't already been hooked up. We'll set the speed of the nav mesh agent to be five. Now it's really obvious that the nav mesh agent is moving based on the animator position. If we click play and I split the screen so we can see the agent movement, we'll see the very large avoidance, but the gargoyle is moving perfectly in line with their animation. If we lower that speed back down to something more reasonable for them like two, 
that avoidance quality goes to be more realistic of a size, and I want to put the gargoyle into a perilous situation at the edge of the nav mesh. This is where we can see that lurping of the delta position between where the root motion animator wants to go and where the nav mesh agent can go. You'll see there's a little stutter as the nav mesh agent and the model couldn't get to the same point. And here you can see a little bit of that problem of when we're at the very, very edge of a nav mesh and you try to set that destination very close there, sometimes I have trouble getting to that point. This is where a combination of angular speed and playing with that delta magnitude tolerance will help rectify this. Now my gargoyle can walk all over this level without really any issues and moving according to their root motion animation. We can see that up the stairs works perfectly fine. Downstairs also works fine. And as the gargoyle comes near the end of their path, you'll see that they slow down and then stop right at that destination that they're trying to get to within that stopping distance. With this guidance and this relatively straightforward script, I hope that this can help you get started on getting root motion animation into your nav mesh agents in your own project. Remember, the most important thing in this video is that your animator setup is going to change the implementation of this a little bit. You're gonna to have to rename the movement parameters and how you have your blend tree set up is going to drive how good of an animation quality you have. And you may introduce jitter if you don't have really smooth transitions from the movement to the idle states. For example, when I had the idle animation of this gargoyle, so I went from the negative one is walk backwards to idle is zero to walk forward is one. There was sometimes some jitter where the animations just didn't align properly. And so when the gargoyle came to the end of the path, they would kind of jitter back and forth because the idle wasn't moving at all. And it just the way that they transitioned from the walk forward to the idle made it not really stop correctly. That was really the key secret that I discovered in this entire process. If you got value out of this video or the AI series, go ahead and like and subscribe to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.